And now Dr. Butler will introduce his patient, Joel Johnson. Thank you very much. I think actually it's Joel is, uh, I, I'm her doctor rather than she's my patient. I think the greatest privilege I have is to be a practicing MD. It's what my mother thinks I do. Uh, the science thing she thinks is some strange distraction. Um, Joelle Johnson is a, a, a very smart young lady. She was born at UCLA, so things started well. <laughs> she went to USC undergrad. They, they, they took a bit of a downturn, but <clears throat> she came back to UCLA for her diabetes management. Um, Joelle is a very smart and articulate young lady. She works for ABC uh, in the uh, entertainment industry. She comes to clinic and gives me a hard time in a very polite way every time about the fact that it's time that this move forward and that she could be treated more effectively. And so when this opportunity came that I had to pick perhaps one of my patients, I thought this was a chance for revenge on my behalf, first of all. But secondly, I thought, well, rather than just giving me a hard time, she can give people like Ed a hard time and, and come here and explain what it's like to be someone, not just one of these pictures, but a, a genuine, delightful human being. So Joelle, I really thank you for coming to do this. And, uh, and, and please be sure to make sure Ed understands your impatience for him to move forward. Thank you. Hi, thank you for having me. You'll have to bear with me, I'm a little nervous. Dr. Butler sort of tricked me into this, but he didn't tell me I was gonna be on a web, but that's all right. Like Dr. Butler said, my name is Joelle Johnson. I recently turned 30, and I'm slowly coming to terms with the fact that I really am an adult now. I'm a cancer. I love to read. When the weather cooperates, I can be found on the beach. I currently live in LA, but I grew up here in La Jolla, so no matter where I live, this will always be my home. I hate thunderstorms, and I've been known to sleep through earthquakes. I'm not a big fan of doctors or hospitals, but I am passionate about my USC football, so. Even though I'm at UCLA, I try and rub it in that my team is better. <laughs> and for the last four years, almost to the day, I have been a diabetic. To tell you that my diagnosis caught me off guard would be a massive understatement. I went to the doctor for a yeast infection. I'd had them before, and they usually cleared up within a few days. But this one wasn't going away, and I needed a prescription. Instead, what I got was so much more than I had bargained for. When the doctor told me my infection was a symptom of a much bigger problem and I had diabetes, I knew he was wrong. Actually, I told him that he was wrong. Obviously, this was a fluke. He wasn't my regular doctor. He didn't know me. He didn't know I ate a lot of candy, and that's obviously why my blood sugar was high. Clearly, he still needed to learn a few things. He probably went to UCLA <laughs> Medical School. <laughs> then I saw his medical diploma on the wall was from John, Johns Hopkins University. And it occurred to me that he might know what he was talking about after all. I left the office in tears and called my mother. The next few days were a blur. She came to stay with me and there was a lot of waiting before I had to go back for more blood work. Eventually it was confirmed that I did have diabetes and I promptly entered the five stages of grief, although I didn't know it at the time. The denial was huge. I probably hung on to denial a lot longer than I should have. I didn't care what the blood test said. I refused to believe that this was happening to me. I didn't know anyone who had diabetes, and save for my great uncle who had type 2, it didn't run in my family. I knew next to nothing about the disease, but if it was true, then I was probably have to gonna give up candy, soda, and many other things that were part of my regular day. I hadn't been to a nutritionist yet, and I didn't know any other diabetics, but I was pretty sure they didn't eat McDonald's. They probably ate things like tofu and wheat. <laughs> Eating habits aside, I'm already, a, I'm already a cardiac patient with congenital heart disease, and I was not about to take on another chronic illness. I skipped anger for the moment, and I went straight to bargaining. If I just drank water and had minimal food before going back for more extensive blood work, the test would come back negative, and I can continue living my normal life. At the time, the irrationality of this plan didn't occur to me. I also struck up a conversation with God. I'm not really sure what I promised him, but world peace might have been involved. Possibly a devotion to charity work. I would exercise, I would watch my eating habits and anything, and anything else I needed to do to improve my basic lifestyle. I just wanted this to be wrong. I really wanted it to be wrong. Anger came back into the picture two weeks later when I was sitting in a specialist's office. 
although it didn't stick around for very long. The nurse was showing me all these new tools that would be part of my life. I learned how to use a meter, how to give myself injections, how to properly dispose of syringes. I learned what to do if my blood sugar was too high or too low. However, I could barely focus on what she was saying. It was all I could do to keep from screaming and throwing the entire BD starter kit at her. Instead, I went home, cried, and threw some things around my bedroom until I wore myself out. Depression arrived that night when I had to give myself my very first injection. I was so busy trying to deal with each day that I never gave much thought to the fact that these changes would be here for the rest of my life. Diabetes changed the way I looked at food, at alcohol, sorry, at nights out on the town. Now I had to count carbs and figure out calories. These are things I'd never been concerned about before. I'd never looked at a nutrition label ever in my life. I had to make sure I had my meter, my insulin, sugar tablets, all of this stuff with me at all times, and it became a burden physically and emotionally. The way I looked at myself had changed. All of my memories were suddenly classified as pre-diabetes and life with diabetes. I saw myself differently. I felt different, and except for my family and a few close friends, I didn't tell anyone that I was diabetic. If I couldn't deal with it, I couldn't expect other people to deal with it either. I was on an emotional roller coaster for several months as I tried to deal with my new lifestyle. Some days were better than others. Luckily, I had a very strong support system in my mom and my three roommates who were always there when I needed them. They listened to me vent, they let me take my frustration out on them more than a few times, and they made me laugh when I wanted to cry. But as much as I appreciated their support, they still couldn't relate to what I was going through. If diabetes had entered my life out of the blue, what other diseases were gonna be right around the corner? It was all a little too much and I felt very isolated. Acceptance arrived one day when I wasn't paying attention. Slowly, I wasn't dreading my nightly shots. My social life hadn't suffered as I'd first feared it would. My, over health, my overall health was doing just fine. Knock on wood. I started to exercise, my eating habits changed, and healthy food miraculously found its way into my refrigerator, although I still know how to maneuver a McDonald's drive through every now and then. Diabetes was no longer this overwhelming hurdle I had to conquer on a daily basis. And when I started telling people outside of my social circle, they didn't look at me any differently. But even if they had, it wouldn't have mattered because I finally saw myself as the person I'd always been. Which brings me to today, four years later. Diabetes has become part of my life, but it no longer defines me. And while I deal with it much better than I used to, I'm not really a fan of it. It's a pain and a royal inconvenience to any lifestyle. And at times, my head spins from everything I have to keep track of. Numbers and meters and all of that not so fun stuff. Dr. Butler often tells me how far treatment of the disease has come in the last 15, 10, even five years. Sometimes I think he's just trying to make me feel better, but it works. And I look forward to some day when I can tell a newly diagnosed diabetic how far treatment and research has come in the 10, 15, and 20 years since I was diagnosed. Thank you. Thank you all very much. And uh, I think you all appreciate that uh, a little bit of what Joelle has to do every day. I don't think any of us really understands if we don't have this disease, just how much is involved in maintaining a normal life uh, with diabetes. Um, I think it's important for all of us to understand, too, that this is not something that is the fault of the person with diabetes. Diabetes is an immune uh, breakdown that we hope we'll find the answer to, we hope we'll be able to prevent someday, but before that, I think we're going to find uh, a way to give people with diabetes a normal life. And I don't know if our speakers can entertain a couple of questions, if anyone has some. If not, I think uh, we'll thank you all for coming, and we'll uh, begin our meeting. Thank you. Thank you.